Hello everyone, welcome to Speedway Motors Tech Talk. My name is Joe, and today we're here to assemble one of our universal in-tank EFI fuel pump modules. These are really great for any kind of late model EFI swap, especially like an LS swap that you're doing. It's a great budget-oriented in-tank pump. And what this is, is some pieces that we make here in the shop that allow us to adapt this Walbro pump and then offer it in kind of a universal package so that you can cut this down and then move, move it to whatever depth it needs to be to work in your, your tank. Uh, these are also designed to work with an existing tank. If you have a non-EFI tank and you want to adapt one of these, this ring allows you to basically cut the hole and then it kind of sandwiches the existing tank and, and will allow you to adapt it. Since our tank is already set up for this EFI module like this, we're gonna just proceed without this ring take our measurements, cut it, assemble all of this, and then we'll be ready to install it. All right, the first thing that we need to do is measure the depth of our tank and then transfer it here to allow us to cut it to make it fit. This will go all the way down to 16 inches, so it will accommodate a really deep tank. Uh, ours is only, it's about nine and a sixteenth from the bottom of this flange to the bottom of the tank. We're gonna give ourselves just a little bit of um, wiggle room there and mark this at exactly nine inches. And then by the time we stack our gasket in and cinch everything down, uh, you know, we should have just a little bit of, of space against the bottom of the tank. Really, you want it just as close as it can be, but you don't want it holding off the, everything as you're trying to tighten it down. So we'll make our, our marks at nine inches and then we'll proceed to cutting this and assembly. Obviously, there are going to be lots of different ways you can cut this based on what tools you have in your shop. We're just going to use a good old hacksaw and uh, then square everything up with the, with the grinder and the file. All right, now that we got it cut, we kind of deburred it. Obviously, you don't want any chunks or burrs that are going to float around inside the tank. And we're even going to kind of wipe it down here to, to make sure we don't have anything that's going to contaminate the inside of our clean new tank. And then we'll be ready to, to start assembly. Before we start assembling, we, we did take this back to the tank and actually check to make sure that it was the right depth. Good idea before you put this all together and then have to pull it all back apart in case you mismeasured or whatever. So as we, as we assemble these two pieces together, we're also going to incorporate these little brackets which hold the pump and they'll sort of sandwich together like so with one screw. There's two of these, so we'll install the other one at a height that's appropriate to hold the pump. And test fit it, so maybe like so. All right, with all of that done, we're going to assemble the fittings into the top plate. These are labeled with what, what they need to be, so positive and negative for the the battery connections, pressure, return, and vent. So it's all pretty straightforward. We're gonna use plenty of pipe dope on these and, and install our fittings that are included. And we're gonna clamp these in the vise and snug them down all the way before we move on. Next step is to install the pump, and you want the, the sock on the bottom of the pump to basically be touching the bottom of this bracket. And these brackets inside here have a little slot through them that allow you to use either a zip tie or a hose clamp. We're gonna use hose clamps just for a little bit of extra safety factor, and then we'll cinch our pump down and start cutting our lines. Next up, we're gonna to move to cutting our lines and we're gonna start with the return. And you want the bottom of the return to be three quarters of an inch above the, the base of the, the sump. So we're gonna take our measurement here and then install it on the hose barb and then move on to our pressure line. All right, and with the return on, we're gonna cut and install the pressure line. This line is meant to be a, a submersible high pressure line. We're gonna install that with some hose clamps 
and then we'll move on to our wiring. All right, with the lines assembled, we're gonna move on to the wiring. It comes with this plug pre-assembled to just plug right into the pump. We're gonna cut it to length and then we're gonna solder and heat shrink the ring terminals on and uh, then we'll be done, ready to install. And then make sure to pay attention. We're gonna put the, the screws that come through here act as the terminals. Make sure to pay attention to which one is positive and which one is negative. Obviously the red on this harness is, is positive and black is negative. And these, these are the screws that act as the terminals and it's important that you insulate this, this plate from the, the current so these nylon washers and these O-rings act as the, the insulation. So make sure that these are installed as they should be, otherwise you're gonna have, have bigger problems. And we'll spin the nut on here to hold everything until we get our truck side wiring attached here. There's the positive hooked up. And then the negative, we'll put our, our screw through here, followed by the washer, the brass washer, followed by then the nylon piece that will go in the hole and make sure that it's turned so the step goes inside the hole. And then that does it on the, the internal side. And then externally, the two O-rings that go through the middle will go on, followed by the outside collared nylon washer, followed by flat washer, and lock washer and nut. All right, so there our pump module is assembled. Obviously, we'll install the gasket and then move on to installing it in the tank. If you have any questions, let us know, and thanks for watching.